Well, this morning the uh, horses from Michigan finally arrived here and it's a little hard to articulate the excitement uh, that that is generating. And it's not just an excitement and knowing that you help some horses out of a bad situation where they weren't getting enough food and care and uh, in these guys' case, you know, wild horses locked up in, in small pens. The bigger excitement all of us have is when you see them come out of a trailer and they see what I call daylight. They look in front of them and they don't see fences, they just see some wide open spaces. And that deeply seated desire for freedom springs out of them. That's what generates our excitement because then you know you've done your job and you know you feel that sense of freedom in them from the top of your head right down to out your toes. And, and why? Because we're Americans. We know what that's about. Freedom is everything to us. Everything. Everything. We send our children in harm's way in wars to keep it. So we should understand, if anybody can understand, what these guys want more than anything, more than our tender loving care, more than, you know, all of our safety, uh, the kinds of safety we try to pile on them. They don't want that. They want the same things we want. They want freedom. So when they came out of that trailer, all of us who live here in America, our joy goes with them. And that's what gets us. That's why we do this work. That's why we have sleepless nights while they're, they were coming here, is because we want to feel that too. You know, if we were them and trapped and confined and we saw daylight, we'd do the same thing. So the excitement of seeing them run around, I think that's why people really feel it deep down, you know, because we know what that's about. People want freedom the same as these guys. And that's why we all work really, really hard to give them their piece of freedom. They, they deserve it. So that's, that's what our excitement is about today. We get to feel some of that and see the beauty of freedom personified in these wild horses. And what's the first thing they did is they took off running. So. What happened was the BLM did, a, I think, about a 1,700 horse roundup here in Twin Peaks, which is only about 20 miles as a crow flies from this sanctuary. And they hauled all these horses, captured them using helicopters, and took the males and castrated them, and uh, started sending them off to long and short-term holding separated families. The, the whole uh, sad story of what happens to horses once they're taken out of the wild. You can go in for 10, 20 bucks, say, I want that horse, and they sell the horse to you. And that's what happened to these guys. They're sale authority horses. So <clears throat> a woman in Michigan bought 29 Twin Peaks sale authority horses, horses who had been in the wild their whole lives, more than 10 years each, and had them shipped all the way to Michigan, 2,184 miles away from their home base. But once she got them there, she couldn't find homes for them. So, uh, and she couldn't afford to feed them. She wasn't expecting to feed them. So within a couple months of them being in Michigan, somebody called, law enforcement went over, and they were all found starving. Really, really thin. Mares with babies and the geldings. So law enforcement got involved and, uh, and, and a rescue group called the Michigan Horse Welfare Coalition started working, trying to get some of the horses away from uh, the woman that had them. 
Law enforcement decided not to take any action, but we were able to get these uh, horses that came today. Uh, so, so it's a really sad story. But for these guys, it's probably the first time that uh, in the whole history that I know of, of the act, the Wild Horse Act, where... You better start that one again. Somebody's <laughs> quiet on the set. <laughs> Okay, boys. <laughs> the magical thing about what we witnessed this morning is, I think this is the first time in the whole history of the Wild Horse and Burrow Act where horses have been sold or adopted off, sent way across the country in mass as a group, and then we're able to make full circle and come back to where they started. That's what these horses got to do. <laughs> Barbara, what a pleasure. This, this amazing. Uh, I've known Barbara for God knows what, 20, probably 15, 12, 15, 20, years, 15 and, 20 years. And to a great degree, the guardian has been the common thread between us, <clears throat> knowing that we have to be the protectors and, and the, the concept of uh, ownership of horses or dogs or cats and treating them as property. This is something I've been fighting, something Barbara's been fighting. And uh, uh, coming together, at, particularly at this point, uh, to, to, to share this experience uh, of, uh, of freedom for these horses. Freedom, not ownership, freedom is uh, just... Uh, is is what everything I think mm -hmm. she and I stand for. So Barbara, go ahead and give it your. Feel. Yeah, it's it's re it's really amazing. Yeah, I mean, we've been working in in separate uh, organizations for many many years, but known each other again because of the Guardian campaign. The first time I heard about it was pretty pretty close when you first started it. I think mm -hmm. uh, right away, it hit me right in the heart. You know, right there. Okay, it's a change of wording, but it's deeper than that. It goes way down, deep into our culture, way down how we're taught. And I, you know, got hold of him right away and said, you know, I want to be part of this. Yeah, I want to be part of this. So today, you know, it's, it's, we get to enjoy this together because, as you say, that's what it's about. Letting another species be themselves and be free, right? Free from our constraints. It's time for a new paradigm uh, in which all animals are treated with more kindness and respect and compassion. Unfortunately for millions of dogs and cats across the country, that is not the case. Animal abandonment, neglect, dog chaining, dog fighting, and puppy mills, as well as general abuse, oftentimes horrific, runs rampant in this country. Fueled largely by the fact that most people see animals as commodities things to be bought and sold, abandoned or mistreated just at the whim of their owners. This mindset though can be changed by just a simple shift in language. Many of us without even thinking refer to ourselves as uh, owners to our pets, but by referring to ourselves as owners to our pets, we reduce them to property or objects when really we feel very differently about them. They are our companions. The word owner is outdated and it doesn't reflect the relationships that we have with our pets in our culture today. But the word guardian denotes a much higher level of care and responsibility for another being. Using the guardian language, it's an opportunity to raise awareness about the responsibility to the animals in our community. As a veterinarian who's witnessed firsthand the terrible mistreatment of animals, I'm convinced that animal abuse, neglect, and abandonment will dramatically decrease as more and more people use the term guardian as opposed to the term owner. I see this as an important step in our efforts to make the world a more just and compassionate place for all our fellow beings. So if you have a dog or cat that you love like a family member, then consider changing your vocabulary. Join a growing trend that is being led by humane societies and rescue organizations and millions of people across the world who are saying no to the term animal owner and yes to the term animal guardian.